Hi, Judge. Lewisberger. How are you? All right. How are you? Another day, another dollar. Are you attorney of the day today? I am. Some of those pay off. Well, I'm looking at the list of names. Kind of like my chances on it. Yeah. yeah some of those, you know, I guess I seen the way it was wrong before. I just like, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, everyone just being courteous and proud, which is great. It's a good bar, but um, just, I didn't think it was fair. No. You know, some people just just shirk their duty. Yep. And you know, they did anyways. And you know, like you say, good brotherhood. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it makes for good relationships. But the way I saw it is, the expectation was you're supposed to talk to other people. Right. So you just a courtesy. I just. Honestly, I, it's not that I want to pay the people that are here. I don't want to pay the people that are for because they're like, they're like, they're, like they're, I was rewarding them. And I think that's the case with some of these individuals. It's extremely deliberate because yeah. it's never an explanation as well. I'm in a jury with you know, mm -hmm. downtown at one o'clock. I can't get out of it. Yeah. Not even a, not even a cursory. Yeah, Sorry, I can't, I can't make it. And then there were stalls, so I think this is actually kind of sped things up too. Oh yeah. So we don't have to ask around. Right. Then the county for the records. Okay, so Mary, you might know this. Yeah, I called last night four times. Talk to the you remember Phyllis, the little girl with the color hair? Yeah. Put me on hold, eight minutes. A long time in the city. Then I called back, my phone's busy. I'll try again and I'll try again. Phone's busy. Last time, phone's busy. I said, okay, can you tell Phyllis that I've tried to reach her tonight? No. Telling me the child doesn't know that I'm trying to reach you, you can't pass that along? No. So if it's a phone call, I don't know how much I can do. Is it this and that? So you get me involved. Oh, yeah. No, I knew that. Okay. They can't stop it from that. But there should be a mechanism to let the child know, hey, your turn to try calling. Because what happened after that is that the family is going to have to why have you lost it? They shouldn't ever not put an attorney phone call. I mean, if the phone is literally busy, I get it, but then they wouldn't tell the kid that I'm trying to call. I'm a female share. Okay. Be, be, well, be. Okay. Yeah. It's never happened. I mean, I've had it happen, you know, one time where the phone's busy, I call back and I uh, okay, what's your turn? Not a problem. Okay. Okay, so do you have Shane's email or Hazel's? Where are you? Are you? Where 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 are you?
he's higher up, right? All rise.
So this is the detention bucket for the 323rd. <clears throat> Is can somebody articulate? Can, can somebody put into words 
a series of statements that if they were true would be a violation of our laws. Okay? That doesn't mean that they are proven true. There is no evidence, there's no testimony, there's no exhibits. This is all, actually all based on hearsay. But if somebody can articulate, uh, if, you're, if you violate the law, then I go to the next stage, which is to decide whether to keep you in custody or to release you. Now, that decision is based on various factors, things like if I feel like you would be a danger to yourself, I'll also release you. If you would be a danger to others, uh, if you're likely to not appear for court, um, if you've previously been adjudicated for a felony level offense, if there's not adequate supervision in the community at your home or with family or friends. If I make that decision to release you, I can put any kind of reasonable condition. I can place you on electronic monitor, I can set a curfew, I can require you to go to school, I can require you not to go to school, uh, live in a certain place, uh, go to work, not go to work. These are all, as long as they're reasonable, I can set any kind of condition. If you violate that condition, then I can sign a warrant to bring you back here because you broke the terms of the release. Now, if I detain you, the law says I must, you must see a judge every 10 days while you're here to make that decision. And we do that just to make sure no kid kind of sits here in our facility without seeing a judge or without any kind of progress on the case. Now, I will let you know there will be information that I do not have in this hearing. This is not your trial. This is not about whether you actually committed the crime or not. This is simply about detaining you while your case is pending or to release you into the community while your case is pending. If there is information that you feel like is important to your case, that is something that you need to tell your attorney. This is not the proper time for that. I'm going off the report that the police provided to us when you were brought in. The district attorney has nothing to do with this. Your attorney uh, really has nothing to do with this. This is just simply my decision based on your case. Now, you do have certain rights at this hearing. You have a right to remain silent. Anything that you say at a detention hearing cannot be used against you at any other type of court setting if you choose, a, choose to give up that right. However, if you give up that right, that is also something I can consider in detaining you or not detaining you. I also want to let you know that you have the right to an attorney. If you or your family cannot afford an attorney, I will provide one for you. I am advising you to use your right to remain silent, uh, but if you choose to give that up, then you have this won't be held against you. All right. Um, parents, this also goes for you as well. If you have information related to your child that you think is important, please tell the child's attorney this setting as a detention hearing is not the time. Uh, like I said, there are no witnesses here. There is no testimony or exhibits. This is simply based on police report that was provided to me, uh, which is meant to establish a probable cause. Um, also, I do see people in here wearing masks. You are certainly welcome to wear a mask. If you want to take it off, you can take it off too. That's really your choice. No one's going to give you a hard time either way. All right, let's go ahead and start with Olivia. Olivia, you are 17 in about a week. So last month, you were brought up here by Ford PD for an out of custody intake. You had a pending arrest for a dating arrest. So I guess you were here previously for a theft in 2019, and you received the need to deferred prosecution for that. So, let's see. So she was still on DVD, Mr. Lewis? I know. So. No, okay. She had this charge of brought in for out of custody intake. Um, Ms. Blair scheduled an intake with the family for that day. Mom showed up without you, saying that you were on runaway status for several weeks. Her report was made. You came in separately from mom to meet with Ms. Blair. And you were told that you need to return to your mom's house, and you refused to do so. The police, Fort Worth police was called about runaway. They confirmed it's active. Since you refused to leave with your mother from our facility, we decided to take you in custody as a runaway. And we held you over for a detention hearing for the, for the offense. This is from May. When Fort Worth received a call about a stolen vehicle, identified the vehicle, followed to a church parking lot. When they got out, two of the three people, including you, seated in their rear driver's seat, ran. Took off running in different directions, <coughs> ignoring commands to stop. So you ran behind the church, they stopped you, and pointed a teaser at you to get you compliant. 
you're complying, you complied, but you get a custody search and found 0.064 ounces of marijuana. So you're given a ticket for drug paraphernalia, and where does your mom? Let's say you're brought in here when you refused to leave with your mother, tested positive for marijuana <laughs> while you had a pending case after you've had DPP. Mom here? Yes, sir. Hi, Mom. So, if I release her to you, will she run away again? I've talked to her. I think that I, can you pull that up on the mask? I can't understand. I've talked to her. Yes. I think that she needs to kind of look careful on herself. I think that she'll be. Okay. And honestly, Mom, I don't care about scaring her. I just don't want her to run away. She's 16 years old. She doesn't need to be living on the streets or on couches. But this is your call. If you think she's going to not run away and follow your rules and respect you, I'll release her to you. If you think that she's going to do her own thing, then I can keep her here. So, okay. So, Lydia, I mean, it's on you, right? If you run away the next time, you know, I'm really just not going to listen to your mom when she asks me to let you go home. Okay. So, if you're level one outstanding, you understand what it takes to get here to level one outstanding. You understand I'm expecting you to do the same thing at home, right? So, you can't be slow to comply at home. Can refuse to participate at home, right? Do not associate. Mom tells you don't hang around these people. You can't break that either. Okay. So, all right. Well, let's go ahead and try it. So you have a history of running away, so I'm going to put you on the electronic monitor, all right, for compliance. And then if you do fine on that, then we'll take it off. But right now, the issue for me is that either you respect your mom and follow her rules, or that you stay here at Kimbo. It will be your choice. I'm also going to release you. What do you think, Mr. Lewis? Are you or sweat patch? I uh, start with sweat patch. I think she would be fine on random UA. Okay. All right. We'll start off with random your analysis. Give her a screen, Mr. Lewis, before she leaves with the zip test. Make sure she's zero. And that way, if she ever tests positive for anything, we you know she can use and she got out of here. Yes, okay. Thank you. Lewis. Hello. Thank you. All right, do we have that here? No, no, we do not. You know he's trying, right? Yes, sir. You know that's all I'm waiting for, right? Yes, you understand this is also why it is so important to avoid PM those felonies or getting arrested as an adult because the, the effects can be long lasting, right? Even though I feel like from what I've seen about your dad, that he's turned the page in his mind that he's doing right. Um, he has to be responsible, but this is where his past is catching up with him. I just, that's why all the kids here, I don't, I'm trying to help them avoid that future that your dad's going through. Okay, so I'm just waiting, Mr. Hall, if he finds a place, you know, we don't have to have another kid here. I'm not fully prepared to lose uh, Lewis in the community to his father. I just need a place for him to live. Okay, so, all right. Any questions, Lewis? No, sir. All right, I appreciate your patience with this one, okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Scarlet. Yes. All right, Scarlet. This is the one. This is the one she set up like 
meet up with the guys, smoke weed, drop acid with friends to rob them, and then victim didn't want to, so they shot at the car while he was driving away. So of the four males that were there came in the robbery. Like how many of those are juveniles? One or two? I know one for sure. I think we're men though, right? Yes. Okay. We got a right. I think those are three of the adults. All right. Victor tried to approach, open fire, open fire on the car. Adult was driving. <clears throat> Yeah, adult Jose was driving, adult Edric was one of the shooters. Juvenile Raymundo was the second shooter. Victim died at scene. Scarlett, you have an injury running away. Do we have a parent here? Yes, we have Okay, hi, Dad. Okay, his river running away. CPS has been involved. And she had run away for months at a time. Dad, this is one of those looking at Scarlet's history, which just seems like you and your wife were trying to do everything for her, and she just refused. It seems like you always try to get help involved and try to, you know, you're always out looking for her and everything. And we just end up here. This is probably one of your biggest fears that came true. Scarlet, just given the severity of this offense, we're dealing with a homicide, right? That Emily, you set up uh, the robbery, and so. I'm just very concerned about the safety of the community if I should release you. Also, I'm concerned about the fact that you have this history of running away. And I'm just afraid that if I was to let you go, you would try and run away from the court and not face prosecution for capital murder. All right, I know right now in your heart, you don't feel that way, but given your history, given what you've done, this is what I have to be concerned about. Right? Had you not done all the runaway for years and years, then that would make me more hopeful in your case right now, which is really tough to trust you. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying it just makes it tough. Like this is, you know, like I say, you're, you're free to make a choice. You choose not to choose the consequence. And when you make a choice to run away, eventually you have a consequence down for you. Okay. So I'm going to go and continue to detain you, and we'll see how things go in the future. Thank you, Scarlett. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, so Tavian, 16 years old, who we here's a runaway back in May. And according to the police report, April 7th. Nine o'clock, they were dispatched to domestic. Talk to mom. She tried to discipline you for refusing to clean your room by slapping. And it said you responded by getting around her back, picking her off the ground, and body slamming her on the ground three times. I saw marks on mom's chin and knees, looked like carpet burn. She described pain and said this has happened before. Then you left home, your runaway, you're arrested on May 4th after being gone for about a month. I brought her over here. Tested positive for marijuana. Judge Porter orders psychological evaluation of placement search. And uh, you are back here on level three outstanding. So, Ms. Paxson, why is he level three? Sure. Um, that happened on 16 9, 2016. The check is a non compliant urine cleanup. Threatening staff Clearly, that's a result of what? Okay. Mom here? Oh, oh no, she, she, she right. Oh, Hi, Mom. Oh, okay, she made it. So, refusing to clean this room, refusing to be respectful, being aggressive, persistently, persistent bad behavior. This sounds like he's when he was at home, right? Like, it seems like he has absolutely learned nothing while he's been here. It is what it is. 
All right, Fabian, if you think you can last longer than me and hold out until I give in, then you're wrong, right? I'll just keep you here. I can keep you here until you can show me that if I were to see you back to your mom's house, so you're going to be respectful to her, you're going to be respectful to her rules, and that you're not going to cause problems. If you're causing problems here at detention, there's no way in the world I think you're going to not cause problems at home. So it's your call. Just whatever you want to just decide to do right, do right. We'll give you a chance at home. If you want to keep on acting like a fool, then go for it. It's all you. All right. So have fun back there. Thanks, David. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Jacobs. Hey, Asia. Yeah, this is the one you indicated. Oh, we're going to hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Mom, thank you. Are you able to talk to him while he's here? Yeah, he's all done. I'm glad he's not happy with us. Well, I mean, one day he'll figure out he should be not happy with himself. So we call him. All right, thank you, Mom. All right. Okay, so we're going to hold off on Asia. We have Christian. Yes. Thank you. Very colorful, Stephen. I just need to see. Almost fifteen feet. Oh, okay. All right, Christian. So, sixteen years old. Back in two thousand twenty, January, you're brought in for theft. <clears throat> Well, that's kind of you got arrested for stealing a car in March. Then in June, you got arrested for probably stealing more cars. And then in September, you got arrested again for stealing more cars. You're placed on probation for the sh theft from 100 to 750, the theft 2,500 to 30,000, 2,500 to 30,000, another 2,500 to 30,000. You're on probation for felony offenses. June 21st, you showed up for a court and we passed it because you had a pending psychological. Why did we ask for psychological police on probation? Do we know? I'm not sure why one had something ordered before, but they were going to have to do something before. Or court hearing for what? For the unauthorized use of vehicles? Yeah. Okay, I have a question. He was already on probation. Yes, correct. He wanted to keep the anticipation for us. So why do we need a psychological? Like if you started on probation? Because I was very kind of see and maybe there was some other issues going on that we could have to check. But there wasn't any problems at that point, right? No, okay. Judge Porter ordered that psychological? Yes. Okay. So you place on electronic monitor. And we give you drug tests which are positive for marijuana. So you're on probation and you're smoking weed. Next day, you're the EM alert saying that you left home, walked to the corner. For about 30 minutes, we did a home visit and you're reminded not to violate electronic monitor. A week later, mom told us that she and stepdad did a search of your room, found small bags with appeared to be marijuana and white powder and a loaded nine millimeter handgun. So I got a report. We issued a warrant for you and you're brought in into custody. Any positive marijuana again? Do we have a parent here? Yes, I'm Hi, Mom. Hello. Okay, so I was just trying to figure out what's going on. Like, we don't know where the gun came from, do we? No, sir. And yet, Baggies of a white powder, which like we thought was baking soda or something. Yeah, in the field, the baggie was baking soda. Okay. But it was to be a fine marijuana. Right. Which looks like he was stealing drugs and using a gun. All right. Well, Christian, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and detain you. Um, I just think if I was letting you go, obviously, you're a very dangerous behavior right now. But I think it's a danger to the community. I'm also concerned that. You 
Christian, you'd be surprised the number of kids that come through here on homicide offenses because they were buying or selling marijuana. So, and the fact that you had a gun, what, what it looks like in drug dealing, that indicates to me that you were willing to either put somebody in fear of their own life or take somebody's life over weed. So, I don't think you know this yet, but I just have this policy whenever kids are brought in with guns or gun related offenses, and I just didn't think that much of getting to make sure I'm comfortable releasing them. So, I'm going to detain you for now. We'll see what's going on, see how you behave back here. See if you can show me you can make the decisions and we'll reevaluate this. All right. Thank you, Christian. Gabriel. Thank you, Mom. Yes. Thank you. So Gabriel, 2020, you were arrested for criminal trespass. You're placed on probation. Two weeks later, after you were arrested, but before you got probation, you're arrested for burglarizing vehicles, which the DA dismissed. And three months later, arrested for possession of marijuana, which the case was rejected. And so. You're placed on probation in November of 2020. So when you came in for the marijuana, I released you on electronic monitor and a sweat patch. Two weeks later, you showed up for sweat patch testing, and it was a, the patch was tampered with. So you just took off the sweat patch. Two weeks later, we received sweat patch results showing. The next patch you received was positive for marijuana. All right, now we have a probation violation. <laughs> yeah. So, do we have a parent here? Hey, Dad. We would like smoking weed is the dumbest reason to be back here. Well, so you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, right? Yeah. Okay, Gabriel, if you can't not smoke weed while you're on probation, then I'll have to keep you here from smoke, to keep you from smoking weed, which is the most ridiculous reason to keep you here. So we'll see you in 10 days at the hearing. Thank you, Doug. Yes. Thank you. And then it's not even about like the marijuana itself. It's just about like your own probation. Okay. Okay. So great. mom is here. Oh, hello, mom. And you are Jennifer? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Osmond, forever is a long time. And you were on probation for stealing a firearm back in 2019, unlawfully carrying a weapon, and possession of marijuana. You picked up some probation violations. We extended your probation now. All right, so June 30th, Fort PD brought you in. They're saying that gang enforcement was doing surveillance on B Street. So I'll be in the parking lot <clears throat> that you were known to drive. They knew you were wanted for aggravated wall trade warrants. They approached the car, observed your mother to be in the vehicle. When they asked mom where you were, you said that he was in the motel. And she called you to come outside and give yourself up. Came outside to be the police taking the custody without incidents. The 
of rewards. And this goes back to April where they're dispatched. For the irate of robbery, two victims approached by two black males, produced handguns, demanded money, <clears throat> got $600 from the suspects. They were able to identify the suspects with you since wearing a blue jacket with a B on it. They got surveillance from the area, fashion descriptions, forward gang unit recognized <clears throat> as Osmond and Camber, documented gang, gang members. Two weeks before that, Let's see, they want to get the shot during the offense outside of Fort Worth, that was at Harris Hospital. They're investigating the offense against you as a victim, and they're trying to give you some photo lineups. And <coughs> information gathered led the police to believe that you did commit the offense of aggravated warfare. Right. April 12th, they made contact with you through shot in the shoulder. You said that you were being dropped off at your aunt's house to meet grandma. Someone drove by, shot the vehicle you were in. Grandma said that you left home about a week before and failed to return. We set an administrative hearing for you because you're on probation. You failed to show up. And so I issued a warrant for you. So you've been on the run since when? April 27th? No, April. Also, April the 19th. Yeah. Okay. All right, husband, you are, yeah, you've been on the run. So I had a warrant for you. You can't, you can't show up on probation then you don't really deserve probation. And if you don't show up for probation, I can't trust you to show up for court. All right. So I, at this point, I feel like your decision to be a danger to yourself and community, you might get shot again. You would be a danger to others. And you should try and rob somebody again. And that you are likely not to appear for court. So um, I just think release would be a bad idea. All right. So she notified me that he did show up for an administrative hearing. I have no way of knowing that. He showed up. He came in the community. He waited for him. He didn't have to show up. He stated that he had called this lawyer in that there was an apartment before. Um, he knew he was going to be dead for issues, but then he didn't stop. Right. So he just didn't want to get him all tried to log in. And she did tell him that she didn't have a problem. She had a problem log in, but he did. Right. He was able to log in for him. Okay. Well, Osmond, I will tell you, you were still on the run for two months. You had a warrant for you. I didn't know I got shot. I didn't die at the hospital. I was never. I told him this wife. I thought I had to tell my what I did. I thought I did die at the hospital. So when did you go to the hospital? I got I ain't I think I got out of April 16th. Okay. I mean, not April 16th. That's still six weeks. weeks I think. That's still six weeks. You didn't show up. So you lied for it. You said you would show up, turn yourself in as soon as you got to the hospital. And I said you not did. Not up, but I was just hurt and dead. I yeah, I don't play that game. Don't lie to me. I don't I know you got shot, but that's not the point. The point is you're saying you're waiting to get healed up before you would show up before. So this would be like four, five, forty years, right? Yeah, until you're healed up. I want to say I was saying like I got work I couldn't even name a woman for I couldn't even box the person for I had to be good for this box being done. You I'm had to be in a wheelchair because you got shot. I couldn't walk. walk. Why couldn't you walk? Because of my own like I had to stand up for my and my own was gonna be sitting down like it was how much weight, too much weight on me. That's why they had me in the wheelchair. You can ask when I left at the hospital, I was in the wheelchair. Mr. Osborne, there is a policy at every hospital where they discharge you if you have a wheelchair. Every single one. You go there for a hangnail or lice. They exit your wheelchair because they don't want the liability to slip and fall on the way home. <laughs> Jennifer, does this, do you pretend that his lying to you works on you? Um, no, sir. That is not the only reason why he was waiting to turn himself in. I spoke with his wife in regards to my daughter. She's been in a relationship less than 12 days and he wanted to see me before we. You know, came back here with the with the COVID and stuff. She yeah. was able to get here, but so it wasn't the arm. It's he wanted to stay out. That was part of it, but I mean, my understanding. The number one reason was the thing 
guess he thinks he's a clever liar, like like we believe him, and we don't. And it's not like, and this is, you know, I know you have a tough job as a mom, but you know, the more you let, the more you just ignore his lying, or let him think he's getting away with it, eventually he's going to start lying and think he's just a good liar and it's not. And so just, I think we have a responsibility as parents to call our children out on the lies. And even if it's just, I don't believe you, I'm not going to deal with it, I just don't think I believe you. So, all right, husband, well, you are a flight risk, so I am not going to release you. Um, he is on... Mr. Reed, do you intend to file the German Senate this grand jury approval on the aggravated robbery? If the case has been assigned to the as far as that, then I'll do the case out. Okay. Can you let Mary know, the court know, sometime in the next week, Mr. Berger? Because if you're going to seek indeterminate, I just want to do the motion to modify here quickly. If you're going to seek determined sentence, it may or may not play out right. So I'll kind of let the, the state take the lead on this one. But if you can let us know within a week or so, I think that's. All right, thank you. All right, awesome. So we will see you in 10 days. Thank you. So this one, under 54A of the Texas Family Code, we will find that the interests of the public are better served by closing these proceedings to the public. I think we only have one left. So we have the department here, we have the responsible here, 